What is going on, guys? I always joke around and say, you know, that uh, I'm the head captain or the pilot. This time, I'm actually going to be the co-pilot. I've got Al Vasquez. Uh, this young fella is uh, hes a very interesting uh, person. I want to say entrepreneur. And the reason why I say it, and I'm super excited to have him on the show today, and I know I say super excited a lot. I really am super excited because this guy came to one of my workshops and just fucking went like ape shit with it, like buck wild, which was pretty amazing. Um, the things that I like most about this guy is his, he actually has three full-time jobs, not part-time. Because, guys, remember, when you're a real estate uh, professional, and I always joke around and I say, are you a full-time or are you a part-time agent? And people like part-time, like, well, nobody wants to deal with a part-time anybody. So it's always full-time. Al, for 25 years, has worked on planes. He is a jet mechanic. He's actually pulled engines out of planes and rebuilt them all the way down to the tires, probably even uh, a change out a couple of uh, toilet seats on the plane as well. He's also been a, an active real estate agent for two years, and he's been a real estate investor for 17 years. So um, it, was, it, was, it was a pleasure to meet him. I actually met him. I met you at an event, right? Actually at the uh, Real Estate Investors Expo. Real Estate Investors Expo, yep. Yeah, that's actually run by uh, Nick Tang. Yeah, Nick Tang. <clears throat> that young fellow's all over the place. Oh. Actually, ironically enough, uh, about, what was it, 17, 13 years ago, Nick was actually one of the first people to take my first short sale class. So it's actually kind of cool to see Come First Circle and everybody doing well in the market that we're in. I just want to put this out there. Um, this is money or Yahoo.com or something magazine. Uh, said that we were actually up, I think, 12% in mortgage applications over the last 30 days. So let's not let the coronavirus get us down. And without further ado, Al, tell us a little bit about yourself. What makes you tick? Because you've got a lot of shit going on. I do. Um, actually, I think I had ADD when I was a kid. So I basically got my hands in everything. I love taking things apart when I was a kid. Um, remote control cars and, uh, you know, my mom and dad's VCR, you may be a little too young for that, but, um, took that apart. I even worked on my uncle's cars when I was about 14, 15 years old. So I was always hands-on. I always liked working with my hands. And, um, I have this love affair with aviation, still do. And, um, I did a little flying when I was younger. And then I had to make a choice between pursuing flight training or buying homes. My rationale is I can always go back to flight training, but buying homes like that, for that price, in that condition, I doubt I was ever going to see that again. So I made that decision. Painful, but had to be done. <clears throat> uh, what would you see? What would you say your biggest hurdle is? Right now, you know, obviously, you know, working on the planes. What's it like out there on the tarmac? What's uh, what's the word on the uh, the street? Well, I work for United Airlines. I don't know if I can throw that out there. I can say whatever. Yeah, whatever. Right. yeah. I work for United Airlines, and um, I just went through this town hall meeting with our CEOs and our chief executives and you know board members and everything that um, we're actually in much better shape than say American, Delta and Southwest right now because our cash burn is down. We're trying to get it down to 40 million a day. I know it sounds like a lot, but it really isn't a lot in the world of aviation. But um, Delta, American, Southwest, they are upwards from the 70 to $75 million a day cash burn. So oh, we're in much better 70 to $75 million a day they're burning through cash right now. So United is in much better shape than all of our competitors. And um, good thing I'm with United right now. Sounds like it. How many years have you been with them? Uh, I'm subsidiary Continental. I got hired with them back in 1997. And through the airline merger between Continental and United, that was back in 2010. So altogether, about 23 years. And I was a crew chief for about five years with Continental. In my heyday, I was responsible for about 
10 to 15 planes a night. This is when I worked on the midnight shift. I ran a crew of about uh, 18 to 20 guys. So in essence, I kind of ran one sixth of Newark at one time. So let's talk about the real estate side. You know, I don't it full time, uh, you know, let's say almost two years. Um, you came to my workshop with, you know, I guess the aspiration of understanding of how to approach people that were in distress. Have you had any other formal training other than anything that I've offered you? Well, I mean, I, I did land with Keller Williams as soon as I was licensed. So it, it is a good place to start. I mean, the training is second to none. Um, yeah, I know I'm plugging them a lot. Um, I work at uh, Keller Williams City Life in Jersey City. I couldn't ask to be a part of a better organization or really, really hands down. They're very good people. They're very knowledgeable. I have a lot of respect for them. And like I said, their technology is cutting edge and they're training is second to none. Did they teach you about distressed real estate? Very minimal. I mean, we do have two agents that are experts at that. So I really like lean on them a lot. Um, one of our agents, actually, I got off the phone with not too long ago. And um, we were thinking about you know, merging of ideas and merging of the minds or, you know, so to speak. Oh, like but, becoming a team or something like that? Well, starting a team, becoming a team, I mean, it's all the same. But um, as far as training in distressed properties, I don't really see it there. If they do have it, I don't know about it. But um, I would rather lean on the real experts on that. So that's one of the reasons why I took your uh, – you know, I took your course, and I'm also going to see you in October. Well, if this pandemic pans out. No well, problem. you're either going to see me physically in October, or you're going to virtually see me uh, in October at the Short Sale Boot Camp Expo. We're uh, we're making provisions that if we can't do it live, that we are actually going to do it virtually. So tickets are still tickets are still selling. So regardless of so whether it's going to be you know face to face or virtually. So what's your thoughts? What are your concerns as far as approaching people that are in distress now that you've been working with me versus before? Well, I mean, some of my experience, so to speak, so to speak is once you build up that courage to just start door knocking mm -hmm. and uh, you're either going to get a response of, I'm so glad you're here versus Get the F off my lawn. I'm calling the police. You're a scammer. I hate people like you. Get off. Get out of here. I don't even want to see you. So at that point, you're like, what do you, what do you want me to do? Right. Um, they don't seem to have the full understanding that they are facing a, you're facing an issue. I mean, you're about to lose your home. And I'm here to help you. I mean, right. I'm here to provide some sort of options for you that your bank may not be privy to give you at this time. But um, time is of the essence, and I always stress to them, look, a couple of months from now, or whenever this pandemic ends, mm -hmm. your options may or may not be available to you. Are you aware of that? And, you know, that's, that's when the conversation starts. That's when uh, I don't work off of scripts. Maybe I should. But I'm more of a person that's like, you know, I just shoot from the head. This is listen. This is what I tell people: the content that I supply uh, for whatever training I offer, you know, or even the coaching. If unless you're a professional actor and you're trying to go off an actual script, you're going to sound like a fucking robot, and or you're going to sound so like manufactual, like when you're talking to them. Well, st st statistics state that if you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. People really want that. They want re they want real, and I think that you are so real, and people can relate. 